Jenny Senapataratna or Senapataratni? Nah, I did it right the first time. Yes, you should have heard the lady at the hotel when I tried to spell their last name from memory. Um, I could just hear the gears grinding. But anyway, they are good friends of ours. They are podcasters, world travelers, speakers, evangelists, Christian pyromaniacs. I'll let them explain all of that uh, so we don't think they're legal. Come on up. to 
the Israelites, and that Moses goes to the Pharaoh and says, let my people go. I mean, we've all seen the stories, right? We've all watched the Ten Commandments with the big beard. and okay. Drop the test. <laughs> ah, that's his name. <laughs> I really haven't watched it. I watched it when I was little. So. Um, but we've all seen that in the tent and the plagues and all that kind of stuff was happening. And finally, Pharaoh goes, I'm done. The Passover happens, right? Does anybody know what the Passover is? It's when they kill all the firstborn for everybody other than the people that put the blood around the door. And it's a thing that we still they still celebrate today. So it was a big event. It was a big miracle that God did at that time. And then Pharaoh says, fine, go. Please get out of here. I can't take anymore. If you send one more bug my direction, I am like, get out of here. Because that would have been mine. The minute the spiders, the spiders aren't there. But if the next thing could have been spiders, I would have been like, get out of here right now. So they go out to the wilderness. And I think it's very interesting because God sends them the long direction. He doesn't send them the short way. He sends them the long way around. And they get to a point where they're in between all of the, of the big moms, right? They get into this place. And I, we didn't practice this, but that's okay, because that's where we are today. Um, but when God is speaking to Moses, he says, go and tell them, it's going to be okay, be strong. That's a Jenny paraphrase. It's going to be okay be strong. Because all they see, because all of a sudden Pharaoh changes his mind and sends out his 600 best troops. And they don't have their 600 best troops in Israel. They have Moses. Who they're all like, yeah, we'll see how this goes. <laughs> right? And all of a sudden they see the Red Sea, they have the mountains, and all of a sudden Pharaoh is coming up behind. And how scared are you now? And so I... Then there's this dramatic moment. Uh, the cloud comes down and kind of separates the two. And Moses walks out and, and lifts up his staff. And the, the water begins to, cr uh, to separate. And the, as, it, as it separates, then eventually they're able to walk through. The Israelites are able to walk through on dry ground. Uh, I mean, again, you, if you've been around church, you've heard this story. But think about it for a second. The, if you were there, you know, we're all there, and there's an army coming, there's some mountains on either side, and they stand there, and this, the water starts separating. <laughs> and it, I'm sure some of them freaked out, you know, and, 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 like, uh, and then they have to walk through, and they're like, ah, you're looking out the walls here, like, ah, uh, I don't know if this is what I want to do. <laughs> uh, they head on through, and you get to the other side, and they get to the other side, and they, they you know, Pharaoh's army starts coming in behind, and as they come in behind, they're, they're thinking this is the bad day. You know what I mean? That's just how they're feeling about it. They get uh, on through, you know, they're about there, and then the waters come back on top of the, the Egyptians. And as they get to the other side, now the Egyptians are, are gone, and in that moment, they begin to celebrate. They begin to celebrate what is, uh, has just happened. They, it kind of probably sinks in a little bit in that moment that they have, they're in a new stage. They're in a new phase. Uh, God has done a miracle. Uh, what they thought was impossible you know, six months before is now a reality. And uh, what they, they have, the years they've experienced is now something that's totally uh, different. And so, uh, Miriam pulls out the tambourine. <clears throat> now, I'm not going to do this for you because that's going to be a bad situation. <laughs> do, you, do you want to do it? No, I'm just no, no. All right. so, Our tambourine skills are lacking this morning. But they, they sing this song and uh, uh, they have this moment of celebration. And our first thing that we want to remind you of this morning, uh, because they have this moment. But they still have a long journey ahead. And even if you haven't reached your destination, it's important to celebrate what God has done so far. Just because you're not there yet. They, they won't get to the promised land for years. But there was an important moment to pick up the tambourine and sing a song of celebration for what God had done up to that point. 
and God has brought you to this point. It may not be where, as a church, where you like to be, where you think you are, God's still taking you, but you still celebrate this moment in time. I'm, I'm a, a per, I'm from personal, uh, when you preach something, you kind of, you shouldn't have it all together, but this is actually something that I, I'm not the best at. Uh, I, I'm the guy who, you know, if God does a miracle, and I'm like, okay, let's, you know, go to the next month. Yeah, I, yeah, the sea is not even fully over, and he's already passed. So he's like, I'm, 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 casting the, I'm casting the vision for the next thing, and I, I did this when I was pastoring a lot, and I, I have learned the lesson, though that it's important to stop and celebrate. It's important to take that moment and think about what God has done. And uh, whether you, as a person, you're already going down that road, take it, you just pause. And whatever else you do, you take that moment and celebrate God's goodness today. Yes, and our second point is to make sure that we're setting up times to be thankful. I think when you look at the Israelites' journey, and we all kind of know that they have all these years in the desert because of disobedience and crazy things, but God knew them so well that in Exodus 13, 7, Pharaoh says, I'll let my people go, and God says, let's take them not to the Philistine country, which was shorter, because if they face war, they will change their mind and return back to Israel. God knew their heart even then. And I think we should set up moments that we look back and we see the things God did. God became a pillar of a cloud and fire the minute they left Egypt. He was there right away. He didn't show up later and say, I'm going to wait till you kind of need me. He was there right away as they started on this journey. And I loved this morning when the missionaries were talking about a journey, because that's our whole life. Our whole life is not just as a church, it's as people, that we sometimes so often forget about what God's done in the past. We don't set things up to look back and see what God has done all along the way. Even on our journey here this weekend, Taking time as we're driving here, and Kevin's like, oh, and I've stopped there, and I've stopped there, and oh, I've stopped there, and I was like, should we be stopping at all these places? Like, we're never going to get there. He's like, this is the most beautiful place in the world. And I was like, it's trees, Kevin. What's going on? <laughs> but it took a moment for me to understand what he was talking about, but normally he comes in the fall, and it's a gorgeous patch of beautiful trees in all different colors. And we don't take time to think about our journey sometimes. We don't take time to do that. We don't take time to go, this is the miracle God did in our first year of a church. This is the miracle he did last week. And I'm going to ask you today to take time to think about those moments that God has stepped into your life and changed things. Because part of the challenge of that is that if you don't uh, set up those monuments that you get down the road. And what the Israelites struggled with throughout that uh, 40 years was they like, they kept thinking, remembering Egypt, but not remembering the moments along the way. They did, oh, it would be better back in Egypt. Oh, we had better moments there. Uh, and they needed those places where they could go back and look at what God has done. And over, and so it, he, uh, Jenny, last time she was here, talked about Rahab. When Joshua, I think, probably uh, maybe learned something from this story, because uh, when he had his moment of crossing the Jordan River, when he got to the other side, he set up rocks. He's like, he's going to put up boulders, he's going to set up a monument so that they could, now granted, they weren't going back to the Red Sea, but uh, they could always go back to that place in the Jordan River and say, this is where God has helped us. This is where God has helped us in the past. Or as Samuel, thus far the Lord has helped us. Uh, so we want to give you some uh, practical thoughts on how to do this. Yeah, because that's kind of who we are. We're very practical. Here we go. So one of the things, one of the, what we're calling monuments and things that can bring you back to things, for me, is songs. Is there a song 
I was thinking last night, in the middle of the night, um, our God is an awesome God. And every time I hear that song, other than, Lord, you were awesome, I think about God meeting me and saying, you are going to marry Kevin. And I went, eh. <laughs> um, no, I'm just kidding. I loved him. We were teenagers, you know, so that's kind of more of a thing. But I, every time he brings me back to that faithful moment that I go, God told me I was going to marry him, and he was going to be a pastor, and I was not going to be a missionary. Here we are. But songs can bring you back to a moment to remember who God is. So, so you think, uh, as you're thinking about the uh, maybe the week ahead, what is that song that you need to uh, put in your soundtrack, so to speak, uh, for to uh, to remember? Uh, places uh, is another thing, and this is from the passage itself. That was a place where they could go back and say, this is what God has done. They, but you can structure that too, uh, whether it's a, well, on that journey that we took yesterday, that I, as I was going down, I was remembering what God has done and making a mental note of those things. Uh, the 10 years, well, probably eight times we've traveled this journey down here, uh, most of it in the fall, and at that spot, it remember, reminds me of the goodness of God as he's been faithful over a period of time. So one of those places, maybe as you walk around in Watertown, one of those places that bring back memories of the goodness of God. What are the, the places in your house that you remember the goodness of God? Some of the other things that you can use are my favorites, pictures and souvenirs. Because God does amazing things when, you, when it triggers, when you see something. So Kevin and I love to travel. It was one of the things we started off as and we very young when we were married, that travel was something that was really important to us. And so I have things around my house that remind me of God's greatness. Um, I have a picture of a teeny little rock with a little shawl over it that I took when I was 21 years old in Sri Lanka because the people of the village worship the teeny little rock with a little shawl. It reminds me of my true God. It reminds me of that we serve a God that's awake and alive and loves us, and I'm not having to worship a rock. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So I have things like that in my life, even your screensaver, that reminds you of things that God has done and good things. It doesn't, it can even be my dog who reminds me of some great miracles that you don't need to hear about right now. But um, <laughs> even a picture of my dog will can bring you back to what God has done. And again, we're, the key where we're trying to, you, we're telling you our story, but the key is for you. Uh, what, what is your, because you're going to forget. Uh, if uh, that, That's the nature of who we are. That's why the Bible uh, commands people to remember. Uh, they, there's, there's that importance to it. So how, what are you going to do to remember? Uh, so even for me, when it comes to when God, ever God speaks to me, or I feel God speaks to me, I have a whole system. Now I don't have the time this morning to walk you through my system. Uh, I got a podcast episode if you were if you're interested. I, I walk my and you through how I do that. But I make a point to capture what God has spoken to me. Now some some of you journal, you know, you put that, you write that down, but not just to write it down. But how are you going to create a system to go back to that? to look it over, because I, I hear people who are write stuff down and then you never hear about it again. That is, that's fine for the therapeutic nature of the moment, but what are, can you, maybe today, maybe this afternoon, if you are a journal person, go back and read through some of the things in the past and say, what have you got to be done in my life in the past? You know, some of them you may want to burn, but yeah, there's other ones. <laughs> where are those moments where God has spoken to you in the past? And since I try to journal and lose my journal, and then I can't find it, and then I find it six months later, I don't journal. So what I do is I write in my Bible. I highlight and I, I write a date, and I write something that the pastor said, or I circle a word that I dove into. And it's something that when I go back over that verse, I'm like, oh yeah, that was God's promise to me. It's something that we so often lose are his promises. We don't hold on to them. We don't hold on to the things that he's given us because we kind of just move on with life. Right? We're like, oh, good moment, let's move on. You know, social media is very much like that. It's an instant thing, and we move on. And God is calling us to find ways to remember him and his promises. And I do a lot of highlighting and doodles on the side of my Bible. So. 
Social, social media, I think you're taking that one. Oh, I'm taking social media, that's kind of scary. Mm -hmm. So I do an app called um, Time Hop. There's lots of apps out there um, that you can have your social media come back to you. And it is a reminder of what God does. So most of the things I put on social media is to remind myself. Because I am super forgetful. I tend to lose things a lot. And it is the way to remember what God has done. And so one of the things that we talked a lot about, the two of us, because we're both very, we have systems. And this is my system. I need technology to help me. Kevin's really good at like being organized, having lists. And I'm like, do you remember where I put my list? And he's like, no, I don't. You know, and I find it like six weeks later, I'm like, I didn't do anything on this list. That's, <laughs> it's true, it's really bad. So I need technology. So this is a reminder for me, my social media, that I can go back even on like Instagram and Facebook, they have like a little button that you can push and see what you've done the last how many years. And this year is your 10th year of Jared and Hillary being here, which I am super excited about because you guys are amazing. And my memories of you guys are in that and how often I've prayed for you. And so that's the way I have things. And I have text messages that you send to a friend and you said, I'm praying for you today. And then you can go back and say, oh, I haven't prayed for them for like a month. What am I doing? And you pray for them again. It's just, you need to start using the technology and things in your life to remind you to pray and to remember things. And so we're going to actually, in a, in a moment, uh, well, today, this morning, do something with that uh, component. Uh, that have a little fun uh, kind of that I, I think is important. Because uh, sometimes, let me just like, kind of say this like, my heart. I, sometimes, as Midwesterners, uh, and I, I'm one of you know, even though I think you don't see that. I, 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 you know, short Sri Lankan looking dude telling me about Midwesterners. I, 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 did, I did my genealogy recently, and, and it was. I, I was surprised. I'm 50% Sri Lankan, all right, that's uh, not a surprise. But then uh, the other side is uh, uh, G German, uh, Norwegian, Swedish, and English. Uh, it was the other side there, so this is, this is, this is me. Anyways, uh, so as, as, uh, I just had to share that. You know? It was an exciting moment for all of us. It really had anything to do with us. All right, but anyway, uh, as Midwesterners, we kind of are this idea that celebration is not as much value. As you you go to other parts of the world, they don't want to celebrate, right? Uh, there is something about that that they, uh, they've they understood the importance. I mean, weddings are a whole other game there uh, in other parts of the world just because they understand the importance of it. And I think it's something that that's not just a cultural thing. That's something we need to learn as Christians uh, to be better at. I think we need to grow. I, I need to grow at that because there's something that happens in us because when we get three days later and they're in the middle of the wilderness, uh, that's for them, they're in the middle of the wilderness and there's no, uh, there's no water and they're like, uh, let's go back to Egypt. They needed to remember the Red Sea. And you're, this week, who knows what's going to happen for you. And you need to go back and say, wait a second. God has led us to this point. What are those milestones for you? And so we felt like, you know, we wanted, felt God wanted us to do a few things as we wrap up uh, this morning. Uh, first of all, we're going to challenge you to... Uh, this is just for fun. This is your, your, this it is just for fun, right. we promise. Uh, so, so after the service, whether you're if you're on social media at all, I uh, uh, just once a year. Right. Okay. This is the moment. Okay. Wait, what we want you to do is to take your picture with somebody. Okay. Now, or the cake. Or the cake. If you yeah, lots of cake. Or I say and post it and just put out there something about. Ten years, uh, you know, hashtag ten year celebration, or uh, Jared and Hillary Rock, or you know, I mean, just uh, whatever, whatever you need to do, uh, and uh, because I want a year from now it to come up in your memory thing, 
And I want people around uh, that know you to know that you're a person that celebrates the goodness of God. Yes. That that becomes the, the habit that you have. Uh, then, uh, uh, <laughs> He's on a roll. We're going to keep going. Uh, second thing we're going to challenge you to do is make a monument of some sort this week to something that God has done in your life. So think about whatever that is. I mean, just kind of go back through the memory files of something that God has done for you. Uh, maybe it's the day you were saved. Maybe uh, it was uh, some place that God did a miracle in your life. Maybe it was a place He spoke to you. Something that has happened. And think of some way to... Uh, to capture that. Some of the things we talked about you know, was uh, write it down, put it, uh, put a picture up someplace in your house, put a, a, a scripture verse someplace where you're going to see it. Do something this week to capture that moment so that you go back to it again and again and again. Put a song on your playlist. Put a song in your playlist. Uh, what is it? I heard this... Uh, guy talking about the soundtracks of our life is a new book out and I haven't read the book but I just really like the, the, the idea that we, we all have soundtracks in our head mm -hmm. uh, that we play and changing that soundtrack can change our life uh, and so what what song that uh, you need to, uh, to add to that and so uh, the last thing that uh, I want to do before I uh, turn it back uh, here that we're going to do is we, we want to pray for you uh, and and pray a prayer of celebration. Uh, and that's, that's, it may seem like a strange prayer, uh, but we're uh, going to uh, celebrate in front of, and I want you as best as Midwestern as uh, us can, I, I want you to join me in this prayer, okay? Can so you stand uh, and, you know, We thank you for this couple. We thank you for the gift that they are. We thank you for your journey in their life. Lord, we together celebrate uh, with them, we as a church celebrate the journey that you have brought them on. Lord, together we are in this moment and we're grateful for you. We're grateful for your goodness. It's thus far you've led us. Up to this point you brought us to this as a church, to this moment. And so we honor you. We are grateful for all that you have done. So bless this couple now, I pray, with the, all the strength, all the joy. May this be a day of celebration for all of us as we're thankful for the goodness of God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So your parents have been married 41 years? 41 today? Well, I know Andrew and I are going to hit 43 this summer. I'm old enough to be your dad. <laughs> How does that make you feel? <laughs> well, I'm still, I'm still here in the day. <laughs> Uh, we've been coming here since 79. So we were here before you were born. <laughs> and and uh, over the first 30 years, so that's about 40 years, in the last 10th, over the first 30, uh, we had, I think, five pastors. And so that's an average of about six, six years. So you've been the odds. <laughs> the longest we had any pastor was eight years, so there was a couple in there that were really short <laughs> periods of time. So again, you you beat odds, and the last uh, the last ten have been uh, just just fantastic. And uh, longevity has its rewards, and the reward has been for us that you've been here, that God has placed you here for the last ten years. Um, it's just been a, a huge blessing, and uh, knowing that. Um, you're here. Uh, uh, years ago, they used to, I guess they used to vote in and all pastors and that sort of, and it got kind of ugly. And it was nice to know that you were placed here by God. The district said, Jared, here's your church. Because it was, it was almost to the point where the church was falling apart. And um, the district said, Jared, give us five years <laughs> at least. And ten would be great. I remember you better mention that. Well, 10 has come, come and gone. It's been our blessing to see Hillary came. You had Silas was just a little boy. A little, and Hillary was uh, pregnant with Mira. And they've had two since. So we've been blessed to see their, and the youngest now is five or something like that. So it's been a, it's been a blessing to see uh, your kids being born here. Uh, 
raising them, and uh, it would just, uh, I just, we just love you, and just are just so happy that you've been here this, these last 10 years, because they've gone so fast. It's just been un unbelievable. So we just have uh, a small gift for you today, and uh, over, the, over the course of those years, which have, been, have gone so fast, we've seen a lot of people come and go, and that's kind of been the mantra of this church. You know, a lot of people come, but in this community, there are, when you talk to different people, especially when people need, um, if they go to the hospital, they, uh, the hospital always asks, well, do you want some clergy to come and visit you? You'd be amazed at how many people in this community name, it used to be Watertown Assembly of God, River City Church, as their home church, even though they may not attend here anymore. But there was a point in time when they really connected here, and uh, there's a lot of people in this community, whether you realize it or not, that still claim this as, as, as their church. And we've seen a lot of pastors come and go, but I'm so glad that you are one of them that is here. You have been such a blessing. So give them a big round. Otherwise, I'll break into tears because it's, you know, it's kind of an emotional thing. So I just want to pray over them. Jared and Hillary, why don't you come up one more time? You know, these two have, like our missionaries have said, have answered the call. Uh, it may not have been the call that they wanted, <laughs> but they answered the call and uh, they've been here. The longevity has its rewards. I don't know how long they're going to be here. It, God might call them tomorrow to go someplace else, but I know that they'll, if, <laughs> if, if they know it's God's call in their lives, they will follow God's call. And it's an encouragement for all of us to be uh, that in tune with God's will in our lives and be ready to, to answer the call and follow wherever He wants to go. So uh, let's just pray over it one more time. Father, we just thank you for Jared and Hillary. We thank you for them so much, Lord, and we just pray, Lord, that you continue to bless them on their journey in life, and here in Watertown, wherever you need them, Lord, we just pray that your hand of protection would be over them. So we thank you for them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you guys. Thank you so much. And uh, you'll be in to do what God's calling you to do even if you don't know it's where you need to be. Because God knows. And um, today is really a celebration of God's faithfulness and His grace and His mercy. And I told someone, um, I spent eight years fighting God, nine almost, on my calling. And I can't, God just did something in the I love this community. I love these people. Those that have been here well before us, um, they put up with us for 10 years. They, they should be the ones celebrating today. Um, but God is so good. And I just want to just thank God for all that he's done and all that he is doing and yet to do. And I do believe greater things are yet to come. So thank you for coming and sharing with us and, and reminding us to celebrate what God's doing in our lives. How many of you know God sometimes calls us to do things we're a little afraid to do and it doesn't make sense? All of you, you're in good company. And I just want to encourage you, trust God. Walk in obedience. Cling to Him with all that you've got, even when you don't want to. And it will be so worth it in the end to see the miracles that God will do and is yet to do. And so, if you'd stand with me this morning.